Okay, what's up my guys? How you doing? So, this is part two of the videos that I promised you I'd get to you. Now, in part one, I showed you how to get the radius of your bender. That's going to be important because that is going to be a part of the formulas in order for you to get the developed length and also the center of your bend. Now, the reason why you would need these formulas is to accurately get the center of your bend. I know if you've been out in the field already, you've seen many times on benders, a lot of marks where people estimate and approximate where the center of their bend is. The way I'm going to show you is how to accurately get that mark and get that center of your bend which is going to be important for when you start using mechanical benders or hydraulic benders. It's good to know where the center of your bend is. This way, when you do start making bends and you want the center of your bend, you don't have to go guessing. You can actually calculate the center of your bend. I know on hydraulic benders, when you start using rigid pipe and such, you don't want to be removing that pipe in order to flip it around to get some offsets done. The best way to do it is just when you can lay out your pipe correctly and just bend and push it through to your next mark and keep bending. That's the best way to do it and the most efficient if you ask me. Now, the developed length usually in a lot of books that I've read, you They've only used this for segment bends. Now, the way we're going to use this is we're using it for every bend. We're going to have to calculate the developed length. And how we're going to do that is with the formula here that you're going to see on the screen, which is pi divided by 180 times the radius. Now, what radius? The radius of the bender, which I already had showed you in part one how to get this times the degree of bend whatever degree bend you're going to use for either a kick and offset whatever it may be that's what you're going to use this right here which is point zero seventeen forty five is the actual answer it's already done for you right here you can just use this instead of the actual pi divided by 180 just to show you a little example here it is right here it's 0 0.01745 times the radius of your bender which for this example in the sake of the video is going to be five and a quarter times a 30 degree bend which equals two and three quarters that's going to be your developed length this is what we're actually going to be using to get the center of your bend. Now, how I have down here, I have to get the center of bend, it's going to be the developed length, which is up here, the two and three quarters divided by two, which in return is going to give you one and three eighths. Okay. Now, we'll talk further about this front of hook to start a bend measurement. In part one of the video, I had already shown you how to get that measurement. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to, but uh, I'll put a link in the description to show you how to get back to that video. Now, what you want to do is you want to calculate the developed length divided by 2 and add the front hook measurement, which for this example, we're going to get 2 and 7 eighths when we add this front of hook measurement, which is 1 and a half inches. After you calculate this front of hook and you add those together and you get this calculation here, what you want to do is you want to start laying out your pipe. You want to lay out your conduit. Okay, and where you're going to place the front of the hook is very important i'm going to show you that in a second where exactly how to lay it out and where to actually place your bender for example let's just say you want to make a bend at 
20 inches from the end of your pipe and you want it to land dead center which is right here center of your bend now after you calculate the actual developed length and the center of your bend is right here the developed length would be these two marks here from A to B with the center being right here this is your developed length these two marks here are your developed length with the center being in the center now after you divide the developed length into half divided by two that measurement that you divide into two you would add that to the center which will get you to here now the front of the hook measurement which we went through in part one let's just say for this sake of the video it's an inch and a half you would add that as well now it comes to this mark here this is where you place your actual bender and you bend when you bend it and you bend that actual 30 degrees for example like we used you know there's just an example and you bend it to 30 degrees the center of your bend will be pinpoint accurate and it will land right here this will be laid out before the bend this pipe is already bent but you're going to lay this out beforehand okay and and that'll be it so the front of the hook measurement this is the start of the bend the center of the bend the end of the bend this is your front of where you're going to put your actual bender so in part one i showed you how to get this measurement here all you're basically going to do is bend a 90 mark on the 90 where the bend starts to bend and measure it the front of your hook to where it starts to bend and that's your front of hook measurement and you might want to you know keep that measurement recorded whenever you use that bender again you'll know what the front of the hook measurement is basically when you first bend that 90 wherever you start to bend it you want to just mark that on the pipe immediately and then when you're done with the 90 you'll just take it off the bender and wherever it starts to bend you mark it start of bend that'll be right here you measure that and that'll give you your front of hook measurement and you're going to use that for every bend thereafter so i'll go through it again one more time from this point to this point is your developed length when you get this here you're going to actually divide it into two right and that'll bring you with that with that answer you're going to whatever it is let's what let's just say it's an inch and three eighths you're going to add the inch and three eighths then you're going to add the front of hook measurement mark it bend it 30 degrees and that'll give you your dead center that's exactly it'll it'll be give you right where you're supposed to bend it okay this is just for an example you don't really have to do the end you don't have to mark it out like this this is just to show you so what in theory what you would actually do is let's just say you want a 20 inch kick at 20 inches you want your kick not a 20 inch kick you want it to land at 20 inches the center of your bend then what you would mark it at 20 inches that would be right here you would calculate your developed length divide it into two the answer let's just say it's an inch and three eighths you would add it from your 20 inch mark then you would add your front of hook Put your bender on this mark here, bend it to 30 degrees, and presto, you got it right there. Center of your bend. 
like I was saying. So, for an example, when you bend the 90, before you start bending it, you want to place your bender here. You could really place it anywhere on the pipe you want to. When you place it on the bender, what you want to do is you want to mark the front of the hook. Not the arrow, not any other place. You want to the front of the bender, the dead front of the bender where the front of the hook is on the bender. You want to mark it. Mark it on the, on the actual conduit. Then you want to bend your 90 like so. Make sure that it's a perfect 90. After you're done, you want to take it out of the bender. You want to mark the two ends of your 90. But what you want to do is you want to mark it right where it starts to bend. Right where it starts to bend on the stub side. Then you want to do the same thing on the leg side. Mark it right where it starts to bend. Okay. Then you're going to take the start of the bend. You're going to measure this, these two points. The front of your hook to the start of the bend. You're going to take that measurement. Let's just say for this video sake, it's an inch and a half. You're going to record it. Don't forget it. And that's what you're going to add to the calculation after you're done getting it, which is the developed length divided by two. This is the front of the hook measurement. I did this in part one already, so I'm not gonna delve into it too much, but that was just a little example. FYI, the gain is not only used for 90 degree bends. You know, you could also use it for any degree of bend that you really want to. I'll show you, well I'm not really sure if I'm going to do the next video on calculating the gain or if we're going to go into actually using Kaufman's method on how to calculate for kicks or offsets. Not really sure yet, but um, either way Please subscribe, click on the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when I do drop the next video. Thank you, and peace out.